Hey everyone, welcome to Nerding IO. I'm JD, and today's video was actually inspired by one of our subscribers' comments, specifically around how to use other languages in VAPI and then connect it to a Twilio phone number. So what we're going to look at is how you can set this up both in VAPI and then with your either transcriber or voice through with different languages. And with that, let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the VAPI docs and we're actually going to see what it says for doing multilingual support inside VAPI, so different languages. So the two things that it specifies are you need to have your transcribers and you need to have your voice, so your text-to-speech. So when we're looking at the transcribers, there's really two, DeepGram and Talkscriber. I haven't actually used Talkscriber. Um, I've used DeepGram a lot in a handful of different applications. One of the great things about DeepGram is that um, it's it, it can be HIPAA compliant. So when you think about like if you're doing a customer support for a dentist office, which I see a lot of uh, tutorials around, like technically you would want some PHI and some HIPAA compliance when dealing with setting up the those kinds of appointments. So uh, definitely keep that in mind when you're looking at these. Uh, the others is uh, voice, so text-to-speech. So there's a bunch of different players and providers that you can use. Uh, Play HT, a really great one. Use that a couple of times. Eleven Labs, I think, is probably like one of the most well-known. Uh, this is great for grading your own voices. We're actually going to look at them today as well as an example. Rhyme AI, I haven't used. Uh, DeepGram again, so you can use DeepGram both for text-to-speech and for uh, transcribers. Uh, then OpenAI, Azure, uh, and Element. So this one's also really cool. I like using this one when you need to show almost like a range of emotion. Uh, so that's that's really awesome. There's also Neats, uh, which I haven't used before. So there's two ways that you can do this. You can configure this in the dashboard, which would almost mean that it's hard-coded, or you can actually configure the multilingual support in uh, the JSON object that you're actually sending. So we're going to look at both ways. And you can even see here that to blow this up, to uh, set the minimal support, you no longer need to specify the desired language when configuring the voice assistant. So you don't have to do this inside the dashboard anymore. And that's what this is kind of showing is that you can actually take this part of the object and put it in the assistant when you actually start your uh, code or in the JSON object itself. In this example, they're showing Azure and a voice ID. And so we're going to replicate this in uh, 11 labs because we can pull the ID from there. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go over to our dashboard. You want to make sure that you have two provide your two providers set up. So you have 11 labs for is what we're going to look at. And we have DeepGram. Make sure you grab your API keys. Um, one cool thing about DeepGram, even though I'm not sponsored by them in any way, they give you a $200 credit. Again, I just really like their service. Used it a handful of times. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about DeepGram, happy to do a video on them. Uh, but what we're then going to go into is our assistant. And so, again, there's ways to like configure the assistant itself in the dashboard. And so we have our ability to talk here. I just put together a test. And the first thing is, is we're actually putting in the first message that we expect to see from the model in Portuguese. Now, I don't know por Portuguese, uh, but that was the, um, the phrase that uh, I used from ChatGPT as an opener. Again, this is coming from one of our subscribers of how to set up a uh, VAPI client using Portuguese in Brazil, so we're going to do our best. The other thing is, is you can say in the prompt to speak only por Portuguese. Again, like the documentation is saying you don't have to do this anymore because this would mean that you're always going to speak in Portuguese and there may be uh, the ability to, to kind of switch. You can actually talk to your agent and ask it to speak a different language 
and it'll start doing that. The other piece is to set up your transcriber. So if we come in here and look at our transcriber, right here we have our provider of deep grammar or transcriber or talkscriber. And then we have our languages. So, you know, it's usually set, I think, by default on English. But we can pick any number of languages that we want our transcription to come out as. So I'm pretty sure Portuguese is PT, so that's what we're going to put here. And then we can go into our voice. And so we'll go through our first demo, and what we're going to just do is use DeepGram and use uh, Astria. And we'll just do a quick test to, and hopefully you can hear this, see how it will come across in Portuguese. Olá, que mal votes esta? O que voce a chat da inteligência artificial? Cool. So it's it is actually speaking speaking Portuguese. It, even though we haven't specified a particular type of voice, uh, it's able to figure that out through the model itself, right? The other piece that we're going to do is now we're actually going to take this provider and we're going to pick a voice that is specific that specifically speaks uh, Portuguese and has like a, a Brazilian accent. So if we go in here and we change it to 11 labs, there's this option to add the voice ID uh, manually. If we go into 11 labs and what we're going to do is first you need to go to like your voice library and you can filter by uh, language here. So we are Portuguese selected and this is going to pick all the voices that uh, we have available in Portuguese. I just picked this one. Um, what you need to do then is you, uh, you'll have this add to voice lab. Again, I've already added it. So we're going to go to our voice lab. We can see right here, this is our voice. And then all we need to do is click to copy the voice ID. It's going to be really important that we remember what this is, or we're at least able to get it for two reasons. One, we're going to put it in the dashboard, but then we're also going to put it in our code so that we can make this a, uh, a dynamic um, voice that can be selected in our code. So let's go back to the dashboard and we'll go ahead and put our voice in. And you can see that it's pulling this directly from the, uh, the voice from it, it's synced to our 11 labs. So now let's go ahead and we'll run this again. I'm just going to publish just for good measure and we'll go ahead and do a new test. Hola, como voce esta o que voce achada inteligencia artificial? Can you speak in Spanish? All right, and so there you have it. We have the ability to speak in Portuguese with a Brazilian accent. It sounded much better than like the straightforward, like deep gram uh, voice, because this is actually trained in this particular uh, uh, language and accent. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take that voice ID and we're going to look at the previous project that we had where we're actually going to implement this voice ID as basically a dynamic voice that we can leverage uh, in Next.js. Real quick, everyone, if you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. It helps more than you know. Again, this video is inspired by your comments, so I'll keep doing my best to answer your questions and put together more contact for you. With that, let's get back to it. All right, so we're going to take a look at the same code base that we had uh, from last week or the last video, where we're basically taking their demo example for the Broadway show assistant. And it's all written in Next, Next JS, and we'll take the voice and we're going to swap it out for Portuguese. And so the way that we can do this is if we look in our code, there is this assistant. Uh, Create Assistant DTO. So this is in your assistance and then assistant uh, TypeScript file. 
And if you look, this assistant DTO has like all your models, the different type of voices. So we have like 11 labs and we uh, can take this information, including like the voice ID. So if you come up here to 11 labs, you'll see the uh, voice ID right here. So we can put in the voice ID that we have with our account. It's just showing like the, the provider specific ones, but we're able to use the, the assistant or the, the voice ID that we grabbed from our dashboard. And so what we're gonna do is if you look at the bottom of this file, you can see we have hard-coded values, right? We have our voice idea ID, this one right here, this is Paula, and this is our Portuguese ID. So we're just gonna do like some hard-coded example, and then we're actually gonna go through and show you how to make this dynamic. So if we go back to our example, and we go ahead and click our uh, start speaking, We'll see that we're calling out. We're actually getting our success calls. Hi, I'm Paula. Welcome to Broadway shows. How are you feeling today? And we've got Paula's voice. And if we save this to the voices that we just switched, we should get our Portuguese voice. Hola, you sua Paula. Bem-vindo a our shows da Broadway. Como você está se sentindo hoje? And so you can see, and I know my face is kind of in the way, but right here, we're actually getting uh, Portuguese. So what's really cool about this is we can actually make this dynamic on the fly. And so what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and, and hard code this back to English. And we're going to pass these values as if we were uh, maybe defining this web page by the locale. So just like you could start speaking in Portuguese or Spanish or German or, or any language to actually initiate the, the AI to understand to go to a different multi-language or lingual support, we can actually do that in code. So if we come in here, I've added a few things and what we're gonna be doing is setting our locale. Right now we're just gonna use a select statement, but we could actually do this in a dynamic fashion where we're actually looking at the uh, locale. Um, maybe that's defined in the browser or maybe we're actually setting this through like a next JS route. What we can do is once we turn this on, we have our set, uh, our set locale. So we just put in our, our values for English and, and Portuguese. We're passing the locale right here in our assist button. We're actually going to send that information down to our, our toggle, uh, which is right here. So we're sending the toggle call with our locale. We're actually going into our, our hook here. So our use uh, VP. And if we have our toggle call, we're actually going to do start or stop. On start, we're going to pass the locale and then on the uh, initiation of the VAPI start, we're actually just going to say we're going to define our message, right? Again, we could really make this dynamic. So you could address the user if they were logged in. You could personalize this however you want. And then we're going to pass our ID, which is, again, this is our Portuguese voice. All right, so let's go back and let's do two different tests. We'll start here in English to make sure that we still have Paula. Hi, I'm Paula. Welcome to Broadway shows. How are you feeling today? Cool. And now we will go for Portuguese. Hola, you sua Paula. Bem-vindo a our shows da Broadway. Como você está se sentindo hoje? All right, and there you have it. We actually have both the English and Portuguese working in the browser using the dynamic Create Assistant with our JSON object. 
So the last thing we're going to look at is just really quickly uh, how you can kind of find, if we wanted to connect this to a phone number, how would you do that? And so the way I would think about doing this is if you go to Twilio, they have guidelines for, for specific uh, ISO codes, right? And so the locale is Brazil and you have your ISO code, and then you can actually look at like, what do you actually need in order to be able to create a new phone number and attach it to Twilio? So that could be like your inbound outbound. They have specific guidelines though for each, uh, each internationalization, right? So can it be inbound outbound um, based on where you're at? The other thing I would look at is like the local uh, regulatory, so getting local numbers um, and looking at what you actually need in order to get this set up in Twilio. We're not actually going to go through this because I, I wouldn't be able to pass uh, the identification process, but there's also a great resource in VAPI which really talks about like how to set up a number, doing inbound and outbound calls, and actually importing these directly into uh, VAPI. The other cool thing, and I know this is like right down by my face, uh, so hopefully you can see it. We'll actually do this real, make it a little easier. Is uh, there's this Ask Bappy button, and this is actually pretty cool to um, if you have specific questions. So I used it previously just to uh, ask about LLMs. You could say import uh, Brazil Twilio number and let's see what we get but it's actually running this through uh, a version of chat I'm pretty sure this is a custom GPT there if you go to their discord they're they're actually really active they uh, they someone had a, a custom GPT that you could actually use I think this is following something similar so it actually read through the API interface or reference of how to do it. And it's actually coming back with an example of how to do this in by curling it. Uh, so it gives you code examples for what, uh, what you're expecting, which I thought was really awesome. So if you get stuck, great little tool that they came up with. Um, and that's how I would go about uh, setting up a, uh, a Twilio number. All right, everyone, that's it for us today. Again, thanks for the comments that inspired this video. If you haven't already, please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, we'll see you in the comments. Happy nerding.